Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bharti, and welcome to TFR Insights. Today, we have with us two new uh, developer advocates uh, from the Cloud Foundry Foundation, Ram Ayangar and Shadrach Atintayo. First of all, Ram, Shadrach, welcome to the show. Thank you, Swapnil. Hey, Swapnil. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Shadrach, let's start with you. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Shadrach Akintayo. Um, I'm a developer advocate at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. And um, I've been doing more of like front-end engineering for like about four or five years before I decided to switch into the, um, the cloud native and the whole cloud technology space. Um, I have so I have a diploma in um, from college in mechatronics engineering and uh, um, yeah, I've been doing more of community related stuff for like over um two, three years now. So uh, I decided to just make a whole switch from front end engineering into developer advocacy, developer relations, et cetera. Like, like this, this, I feel like I'm a big fan of the community and that's one of the reasons why I decided to make a switch to serve the community better. And yeah, it's um it's been great. And um, so far I'm looking forward to learning more and doing more cool stuff. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we'll talk more about what your plans are. Ram, now let's get your story. I am qualified as an engineer, uh, but I've always been an educator at heart. Um, so I've been uh, working with uh, cloud-related technologies for a few years now. And um, it's always a pleasure to discover new technology and educate more and more people about it. Uh, and this role gives an opportunity to do just that. And uh, I have been dabbling with a lot of tools uh, in the DevOps space specifically. And so Cloud Foundry came along as a, as a welcome gift, so to say. Can you also share, <laughs> if you do have any anecdote to share, when you came either to learn about Cloud Foundry, to know about Cloud Foundry, and when you got involved with the project? Sure. So my first uh, brush, so to say, with Cloud Foundry was uh, back in 2016 um, when it was rather pivotal heavy. And then I uh, had a chance to observe it become like an open source project. And um, I kept track of a lot of the open source contributions. Uh, and more recently, after they made the switch to being Kubernetes ready and more uh, Kubernetes native, um, it felt like a project that could make a huge impact in helping with developer productivity and tackling a lot of the problems that the developer community at large is having with Kubernetes in general. So uh, that was, you know, the sort of tipping point in wanting to work with the foundation. And here we are. Perfect. Now, Shadrach, let's get your side of the story. When and how you came uh, or you were exposed to Cloud Foundry? Tell us the story. Yeah, um, so the first time I got exposed to Cloud Foundry is actually this year. Um, it's actually because of my role as a developer advocate at Cloud Foundry Foundation that I decided to like, okay, learn what Cloud Foundry is about. So I was basically a beginner in everything when it comes to um, Cloud Foundry. And yeah, um, when I just like joined the foundation, I decided to like do, do a whole new learning, learning phase, et cetera. So I'm not like RAM that has been doing cloud stuff for like since 2016. Um, I just like just started this year and yeah. Awesome. Can you also talk about, you know, what exactly do you do at the foundation as, you know, a developer advocate? As a developer advocate at the um, Cloud Foundry Foundation, what we do basically is to um, create um, technical content for um, the Cloud Foundry community, both um, existing community and um, new community. So our main aim is just to get more individual developers to use Cloud Foundry. Um, a lot of um, developers think that Cloud Foundry is just like an enterprise um, ready or means for just enterprise um, solutions, but our aim now is to change that narrative and get more individual developers, lesser smaller teams to um, use um, Cloud Foundry um, technology um, through maybe videos, through um, articles, et cetera. So that's our main aim as developer advocates at Cloud Foundry. So Ram, is your role also same as? Uh... Yeah, both uh, Shadrach and myself work on slightly different parts of the project at the foundation. Um, the goal is to complement each other's skill set and experience uh, well. So um, Shadrach uh, tends to take an approach that focuses on the language and frameworks and uh, the diversity of um, 
just programming languages that CF supports. I tend to take an approach where I focus on the infrastructure side of things, work with the platform operators a little more than with the languages themselves. And then, you know, obviously in terms of producing content and sort of uh, shipping it between each other for reviews and things like that, we both have a, um, a nice collaboration going in terms of uh, reviewing our work for technical accuracy and things like that. So um, we, we, we have a very complementary role, um, although not too symmetric. Right. Also, how much of this role is active versus passive? Because when I think of develop, developer advocate, you know, you are talking to a lot of people, you are interacting with a lot of people, community. So talk a bit about what actually it entails. You know, is it like, I mean, as you said, you know, you also create content, you also interact. So is it like passive where you just create content and people come and consume? Or you actually go out, talk to people or help them understand the technologies and how they can embrace it? Yeah, I'm um, sure. So, um, the main aim was just to, um, was basically to create content, et cetera. But um, due to the um, COVID-19 and the whole pandemic thing, we cannot actually go out and um, talk to people, get more people to like see how Cloud Foundry is used. But um, whenever the um, pandemic goes off or stops, we would be doing more of like physical interactions with communities and um, attending event, Cloud Foundry events all across the world. So yeah, that's, that's um, the aim actually. Right. Uh, and how how is it you're different because you you said you know you complement the RAM uh, and you are you said you know you're more on the different side of it but of course because of the pandemic we have our own limitations but we are I mean there are a lot of webinars going on there are a lot of events going on so Ram can you talk about you know from your side how are you planning to reach out to users or you know members sure the important thing is that we continue to find new audiences and educate them about Cloud Foundry as much as possible. Uh, we're doing this uh, in a region by region basis. So we have some very geography focused programs that we're rolling out slowly. Um, the first few months of the advocacy efforts has been more uh, learning ourselves than teaching other folks. Uh, I guess like an any like any good uh, advocacy program should be, uh, but now we are at a point where we are uh, starting to um, do more uh, interesting multimedia stuff like live streaming and live coding and live installations. Uh, and because Shedrak and myself are both based in different parts of the world, uh, and a large part of the foundation is like based out of the US, Shedrak is based out of Africa, I'm based out of India. It gives us the bandwidth to sort of um, uh, provide coverage and support in, in different local uh, time zones and things like that. So one of the things that we've been doing is to try and spread it out, you know, geographically and make sure that um, you know, webinars and live streams and some training programs are available for developers out there who might be on like different time zones. So that's one thing we're doing. Again, I think it's a, a part of it is that the pandemic has uh, forced us to uh, find ways and means like this. Uh, and, and I also think it's very important that we uh, ensure that, you know, the, the Cloud Foundry cheer is, is spread everywhere equally and not concentrated on specific geographies and things like that. And as you're saying, you know, you guys are in the phase that you yourselves are learning about the foundation and foundry and the project. So, so tell me a bit about Shadrach. Let's start with you. What have you learned so far, which you did not know before? Yeah, I mean, everything with cloud technologies. Like, um, I, like I said, I was moving in from the front end space to um the cloud native space and cloud tech. So, um, yeah, just bef um, before then, I didn't know about um most of these like. DevOps related things like maybe Prometheus, Kubernetes, et cetera. Um, but now I kind of have a grasp of how these things work and how, they, how we should probably use them in developer operations processes, um, et cetera. So yeah, that's, that's mean. So most of the whole cloud um, concepts before um, I got into the foundation, I didn't know that, but when I'm, now that I'm in, I kind of have a good grasp on how these things work and how to use them. Ram, tell, share your experience. What have you learned? <laughs> Well, we learn something or the other every day, I guess. Um, most of the stuff has been, what's the next error that can come about? <laughs> so, um, uh, I mean, stuff breaks all the time. We learn how to fix it. And as engineers, that's how we um, you know, learn and evolve. Uh, but the big piece for me has been how many different 
day two Kubernetes problems can be solved so easily with Cloud Foundry. Uh, you talk about multi-tenancy, there's a very elegant solution that Cloud, Cloud Foundry offers. Uh, when we talk about roles-based access controls, for example, there's again, a very simple, sweet, elegant solution that Cloud Foundry offers. So there's like numerous such, um, you know, day two problems specifically that Cloud Foundry has very good answers to and discovering these solutions first and then framing them into the right problem set has, has been, you know, the, the uh, biggest part of what has been going on um, for, for the advocacy team. Yeah, you said that, you know, as engineer, you try to fix, but uh, one part of engineering also to break things. You guys break also a lot of things, sometimes on purpose, sometimes not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so now, uh, let's talk about uh, the community uh, in, in general, in whole. You guys come from outside. I mean, of course, you are involved with CloudFund in some capacity, but when you are like, inside how do you see the further i mean the cloud funding community is already you know you know kind of very very you know big and influential but how do you further see community growth community's growth and where do you see community growing because you know uh, now cloud foundry kubernetes all these com technologies are working together it's no longer about hey i use x or i use y so talk about uh, uh, the evolution of the community itself from your perspective yeah, um, so personally, I, one word to de um, describe the Cloud community, awesome. Um, the Cloud community is like wonderful. There's so much collaboration going on, so much people trying to help each other. And that's like one of the best traits for I mean, community that want to grow. Um, so personally, for the um, collaboration between um, Cloud Foundry itself and um, Kubernetes is, is like one of like, it's going to see increase the growth of the of the Cloud Foundry community in the sense that when we collaborate um, with Kubernetes community, we see more people coming to understand how Cloud Foundry can make their Kubernetes um, workflow easier. Um, personally, I do not do so much um, Kubernetes um, stuff, but with Cloud Foundry, um, it's just easier for me. Someone that is just beginning, that's just learning, and um, with Cloud Foundry, it's easier for me. So this particular shift would try to get more people to come into the Cloud Foundry community. So I'm seeing the Cloud Foundry community become bigger and uh, do, um, collaborate more with um, the Kubernetes community. Ram, how do you see community grow and where do you uh, is, go from here? I mean, just to, you know, hark back on that point we were making about errors and breakages, uh, there's something or the other that Shedrak and I just constantly report back to the community. And since the first time we did it, folks have been very uh, supportive in whatever we've been trying to do. And they've, you know, been very um, um, proactive in offering solutions to both you know, this, this is still experimental, that stuff works, that stuff doesn't, these are probably the steps you should take, here's documentation, here's a GitHub repo. We've received a tremendous amount of help. So folks have been very welcoming, um, you know, even if we are critical at times, the, the feedback has been very well received. And I think there is a very interesting, um, you know, cog in the wheel that we uh, that we get to fill, which is, uh, you know, be sit between uh, so many of these wonderful engineers who are, you know, distributed across some of the biggest and the best, um, you know, technical organizations of today. And to just, you know, work with all of them in helping improve uh, this incredible piece of technology is, is just amazing. And, uh, you know, a large part of it is thanks to the very um, welcoming community that's in place. Uh, Shadrach, Ram, thank you so much for taking time out from your schedule and talk about not only your own journey, but also how you see uh, Cloud Foundry. You also talk about, you know, of course, the, there are problem areas and then how you are working to, to help community fix those areas and how you see the evolution and growth of community. And I look forward to talk to you again. So once again, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you, too. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Swapnil. Um, a lot of the information about Cloud Foundry out there is thanks to your videos as well. So really enjoy um, watching all the content you produce and thank you very much for having us today. Yeah, thank you, Stockton. So